So like many people around the world, you may very well be in forced lockdown right now. And if you saw my video yesterday here on Fenrir Canine Training, I said that I'm gonna do as much content as I can to help you guys, give you some drills, give you some training routines, give you some things that you can do to really train your dog, to level up your canine leadership so that you have a perfect canine companion ready to take on the world when eventually we get over this current pandemic. So if you are new here, welcome to Fenrir Canine Training. My name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist and on this channel I help people become high level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions so if you are new here and you want to see more videos like this make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as hitting the notification bell so you never miss a future upload and in this crazy time where so many of us are having to self-isolate or go into full quarantine modes I do hugely recommend our boot camp course it's a protocol I've been using for years and I designed myself to implement with all of the clients I work with from training dogs through to high level canine behavior consultations and behavior modifications it's a process that I use to be able to restructure that relationship with your dog whether they're young puppies all the way up to senior very old dogs but you can restructure that relationship so that your dog sees you as a canine leader to look to for guidance and direction then we can layer on these levels of obedience that we're going to talk about in this video so you can have that perfect canine companion that is under control and a pleasure to be with no matter what circumstances you find yourself in and no matter what's going on around them so if you're interested in that course and you want to utilize this time perfectly then I highly recommend checking out that course the link is down in the description box below and in that course I give you lots of opportunities to do really specific obedience routines and one of the routines I want to discuss is a routine that I'm going to do today with my Labrador Sully and it's something that you can do whether you can get out in the garden like I am today or you can even do it in your living room in your kitchen room in the bedroom anywhere that you are on lockdown or self-isolating and quarantining you can achieve this same routine and it's about teaching and different markers to different behaviors and in particular today we're going to work on silent non-verbal communication with our dog using hand gestures now i genuinely think it's really important to have multiple markers for the desired behaviors that you're looking from from your dog whether that's basic obedience drills all the way through to high levels of obedience or agility it's really useful to be able to communicate with your dog in different ways not just verbally so every time i train dogs i train them first of all using the verbal basis of training giving verbal commands and then expecting a desired response from our canine best friends but then once we've got them to that point layering up different markers for the same commands now that's useful for multiple reasons so it allows different people to be able to work with the dogs in different circumstances because you're not just relying on your voice your vocabulary your tone of voice your language even it means you can have a dog and with different obedience that can transition across all languages but also as dogs get older their hearing can often go and if you have a deaf dog you need to be able to communicate with them not just non-verbally the same goes flip wise once their vision starts to go you just don't want to have hand gestures you want to be able to talk to them and vice versa and not only that but also these kind of drills are super fun for the dog it challenges their mind it really ramps up the mental stimulation which allows them to kind of drain that energy and we'll let them settle down which again at this time is super critical so adding multiple markers to multiple behaviors is what we're going to work on i'm going to show you a drill now but obviously we are doing a non-verbal drill so we're going to go to complete silence i'm going to get rachel to film me as i'm doing the drill but then when i'm editing this video i'll voice over it now which is what you're all about to see so i'll talk to you now so here we go, we're going to start with the drill and this drill is really important, obviously this is a drill I've worked with in my Labrador many times so it's going to be a little bit more advanced than if you've never done this drill before. But to start off with this drill, what I'm doing is I'm giving Sully commands that he already knows verbally. So here I've given him a heel command and I'm using it verbally at this stage but as you can see, I'm lay as I'm using the commands, I'm giving a hand gesture as well. So I gave him a stay command with an open hand, I gave him the come command with my arms wide and you can repeat that and repeat that so he starts to get the idea that the verbal command is also linked to the gesture or the hand gesture that you're giving. So with the heel command, I have a finger pointed straight down to the floor on my left hand side. The open palm command there is what I've been using as I've been doing with stay. And as you can see, I used, I put my finger on my lips here just to kind of give you an example. Um, and as you can see here, my son starts to have an amazing, um, he can't get his helmet off for his bike. <laughs> so let's just appreciate that for a minute. Absolutely fantastic. Really, we're going to go through this video a couple of times. I promise you we'll, we'll get plenty informational. Um, but so the commands we're using here. So at this point, I'm not saying a single word. So what I've done here is 
you can see I've got my hand up there. That's marking the stay command. I've clicked down and pointed to the floor. That is the, my marker, my non-verbal marker for the heel command. My hand's gone up. I've seen that he's looking to me for guidance and direction. He's noted the hand gesture, so he's staying in the command. My arms go wide, and he knows that means come. Now, obviously, you can't just do this straight away. You have to layer it up over time. So that's why you always need to teach the command traditionally with a verbal command. But as you're teaching that command, use the hand gesture as well. And if you've not done that, go through this routine a couple of times at home um, using the verbal command and the new hand gesture that you want to link. And then slowly start going through this routine and removing the verbal command to this. And over time, you'll get there and you'll get there and you'll layer it up and you'll layer it up and you can have a dog that can follow those commands completely with no verbal whatsoever. Now, we're gonna go through that video one more time. This time, I'm not gonna get distracted by my son having a helmet meltdown. But again, I'll go through the principle and the basis of what we're doing here. So again, right now, I'm gonna go through step by step of what I've done. So I've asked him, heal, and I pointed at the same time. I've asked him, and I rewarded it. I asked sit with a fist closed, and I've asked stay with my hand palm open. And at this point, I say, come with my hands wide. So that's the start in the basis of this routine. You build that up and you build that up so the dog can create the association between the verbal marker and the new gesture marker. Now, at this point, I'm still using the verbal, but as of now, I switch to completely non-verbal. And you can, this is a drill that you can do during isolation. So again, I'm not using any markers whatsoever verbally. I've just put my hand up here. Sully knows that means stay, arms go wide, he knows that means come. I'm not using any verbal praise at all either. I'm simply praising the behavior, reinforcing the behavior with a treat that's in my pocket. So as we'll go through it again, so my hand is up, that means stay, arms go wide for come, hand goes closed, fist closed for sit, hand out for stay, reward you don't have to reward every single time you just reward a little bit and obviously as your dog gets older i'm working here under distractions that's why i had my boys with me i wanted to work under distraction that's why i brought them up you can do these drills when there's other dogs around i'd bring my mum's husky and jack russell up next time to layer up additional distraction and get sully constantly looking to me for guidance and direction regardless of what's going on around him so again i'm not saying a single word and i've got him under complete control even though there's very high energy distraction with my two sons going on around him he's still looking to me for guidance and direction and eager to work we're making it a fun really positive experience here and I'm using like I say there he made a slight mistake I didn't correct him didn't tell him off I asked for the command again and he dropped into the heel position moving forward again here pointing down to mark my heel fist closed to mark a sit praising that behavior and off we go it's not rocket science but it's tons of fun now, I hope you found that really useful. Did you enjoy that, Sully? Sully, did you enjoy that, buddy? I'm sure you did. You love working. Dogs thrive off working, whether it's just simple drills like this all the way up to proper high-level high uh, working roles. Dogs want that uh, relationship with their owners. They want to follow guidance and direction from their leaders. It's why I talk about it so much. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Get out there, try it with your dogs, teach them multiple markers for different levels of obedience and training. Have some fun with it, and I'll see you tomorrow for more guidance and more tips on how to train your dog during these lockdown situations.